better or worse, Borderlands 3 is both confident and comfortable in its stance that explosions are the best thing ever, and people screaming about voiding their bowels as they die is a close second. This kind of brash, I don't care what you think attitude is even evident in the fact that, just as we finished testing a pre release copy of the game and were preparing to make this video, the retail version has showed up, with a bunch of changes to the graphics presets and generally lower performance on most GPUs, forcing us to start over. Thanks for that, Randy. No matter though, because we now have results of the finished game and can tell you that Borderlands 3 will run even on integrated graphics, with a few caveats of course, while Smooth 1080p only requires a basic dedicated graphics card, even at medium quality. That said, it can get very tough on a GPU as you rise through quality settings and resolutions, and only a very small handful of high-end GPUs can manage 60fps at 1440p Ultra. Since this is an AMD promotional game, there's no NVIDIA RTX ray tracing or DLSS, but it does support AMD's new Fidelity FX Contrast Sensitive Sharpening Filter, which actually works on all GPUs, unlike DLSS. We tried out Borderlands 3 on both AMD and NVIDIA GPUs, as well as AMD and Intel Integrated Graphics, a collection of CPUs to see how much of a difference your processor makes, and three gaming laptops, all of which were provided by our hardware partner MSI. The game handily includes a built-in benchmarking tool, which we've exclusively used for testing and you can try for yourself if you've already bought Borderlands 3. Just know that there's a bit of variation between runs, and we have tested every resolution and setting multiple times and use the best score to ensure consistency of results. Before jumping into the benchmarks, let's take a look at the settings you can play around with. There are six general presets, very low, low, medium, high, ultra, and one I unfortunately have to say out loud, badass, with a healthy 18 individual settings. The good news here is that most of these settings won't affect performance much at all, so go ahead and leave them on their respective highest settings. This includes the likes of texture streaming, shadow and terrain detail, character detail and screen space reflections, and even using FXAA won't cause a drop in frame rate. Temporal anti aliasing is pretty cheap too, although it can cause a blurring effect. The DLT FX will then get these edges looking nice and sharp again, with minimal cost performance. If performance isn't where you'd like it to be, and you're in dire need of some extra frames, a few settings help tone things down. Turning off volumetric fog can boost performance by as much as 24%, while turning down material quality, which appears to be a general texture quality setting in disguise, can provide an extra 14% when switched from its highest setting to its lowest. Doing the same with draw distance can improve things by 12%, which might be worth doing if you're not the kind to stare longingly into the horizon, while turning down foliage detail will also produce a 12% improvement. As you're about to see, these relatively modest differences can add up some pretty major improvements when swapping between the presets. Let's hit the benchmarks, starting with integrated graphics at 720p. AMD's Vega 11 can hit nearly 60fps, while Intel's HD Graphics 630 is in the sub-20 range. If you're using such a slow graphics solution, try setting the resolution scaling to 50. At that point, even the HD 630 can manage 30fps, although it obviously looks pretty blocky. The 1080p, entry-level dedicated GPUs like the GTX 1050 are pushing 60fps, and anything just a bit beefier, say the GTX 1060 listed in the game's recommended hardware requirements, will easily get above 100fps. Faster GPUs can break 144fps, although Borderlands appears to hit a CPU limit around 150 to 160fps. We'll skip the low preset, which is about 10% slower than very low, and head to 1080p medium. This is a modest jump in rendering requirements, with integrated graphics going out of the picture, but at least 30fps is still within grasp for budget cards like the RX 560 and GTX 1050. For 60fps, you still only need a half-decent mid-ranger, the GTX 1650 and above will suffice. The release version of Borderlands 3 doesn't really go for ultra-high frame rates, which means even an RTX 2080 Ti falls short of 144fps. However, a silky 100fps only needs a GTX 1070 or better. It's not until 1080p high, where all the shooting and space magic in Borderlands 3 really starts to take a toll. 60fps now needs at least a GTX 1660 Ti, and even that will make the occasional dip below. It's also kind of silly how the GTX 1060 and RDX 590, both of which are in the recommended hardware list, can't average 60fps even two whole presets below the maximum. That's something that should only be recommended as highly as a two hour audiobook of claptrap lines. If you've got a GTX 1080 or better, you can even go one step further and still be running Borderlands 3 fluidly at 1080p Ultra. The difference in graphics quality between high and ultra, or even badass, isn't that noticeable, so don't feel bad if you need to drop a few settings from ultra to get smooth performance. It's a shame that so few GPUs can handle the maximum quality, and only the RTX 2080 Ti makes past 100fps on average, let alone to 144fps. Still, you don't strictly need an ultra powerful system to play on ultra quality. We can see even the humble GTX 1650 can shuffle its way to 33fps. 1440p Ultra, on the other hand, yikes. You'll need a GTX 1080 Ti just to make 60fps, and while most of the GPUs left standing don't entirely fall to pieces, 
of what we consider high-end cards, such as the GTX 1070 and GTX 1080, aren't even making it to 50 FPS. The minimum and recommended system requirements don't specify what level of quality and performance you can expect from them, but again, we're guessing recommended doesn't mean recommended for 1440p, as the GTX 1060 and RX 590 are both wallowing around the 30 FPS mark. This might make you think that 4K Ultra is too much to ask for most of these GPUs, and you'd be right! Not a single one, not even the RTX 2080 Ti, could make it to 60 FPS. This GPU and the RX 2080 are your best bets if you absolutely insist on playing at this quality and this resolution, as they at least stay well clear of the 30fps minimums, but it would probably be wiser to just drop to high or medium. At least on the GPU side then, Borderlands 3 is what you might call a 1080p game. It's not that it can't run at 1440p in 4K, but considering how 1080p can accommodate years old integrated graphics and 2019's newest dedicated GPUs alike, this game just seems a lot more comfortable at a full HD resolution. As for CPU results, there's a modest gap between AMD and Intel, depending on the setting and resolution. The Core i9-9900K is consistently the best performing chip, so Borderlands 3 responds well to both clock speed and core count. An overclocked Core i7-8700K isn't usually far behind, but at stock speeds the 8700K is just barely ahead of the Ryzen 9 3900X and Ryzen 7 3700X, which in turn have a slight lead over the Core i5-8400. Bumping up to 1080p high, the gap between the CPUs narrows a bit, but Intel's i7 and i9 CPUs still show performance advantage, and the Core i5 basically matches AMD's fastest CPUs. The good news is that outside of the i3-8100, all the CPUs keep minimums above 60. The processor can make a difference at 1080p, but the Core i9 is 41% faster than the Ryzen 5 2600 when using the very low preset. At 1080p Ultra, that narrows to 29%, while at 1440p it's only 11%, and everything is basically tied at 4K, but that's using an RTX 2080 Ti. With cards like the RTX 2060 and RX 5700, the tie would shift to 1080p high, and for an RX 590, most CPUs would tie even at 1080p medium. Lastly, it's the turn of the laptops. There's actually very little difference between the GE75, the GS75, and the GL63 between very low and medium, and none of the laptops managed to break 120 FPS regardless of setting. On the high preset, which we're showing here, the GE75 with its RTX 2080 GPU finally managed to carve out a noticeable lead. It's quite a big one too, running about 40% faster than GS75 and its RTX 2070 Max-Q. However, both the 2070 Max-Q and the RTX 2060 equipped GL63 manage to keep above 60fps, though they do dip below it when engaging the Ultra preset. For this, you'll need the GE75, and even then it's not really exploiting its 144Hz display. That's Borderlands 3 through and through. It's accessible at lower settings, and at least where desktop hardware is concerned, you won't need a super-powered system to get it running smoothly. However, as you aim for higher presets and resolutions, the degree of performance hit doesn't so much creep upwards as it does make angry, sweaty sprints. Our advice? Don't just rely on the presets. Start with one as a guide, sure, but tinker around with the more GPU-hungry settings like volumetric fog and material quality until you've got a level of performance that you're happy with. Spend a few minutes doing this, and you might find all that poop-joking loot shooting runs a lot smoother. Thanks to MSI for providing us with our testing hardware. We've got more performance analyses coming, so like and subscribe to stay tuned, and thank you for watching.